when do you need a weight distribution hitch? Knowing when to use a weight distribution system is much easier if we first learn how one works. While there are many systems on the market, all work the same way. They distribute weight from one point to many, leveling the combined suspension system of a towing vehicle and trailer. Most weight distribution hitches use spring arms to pull downward on the drawbars of the trailer. This creates lift at the coupler leveraging the weight of the hitch load off of the towing vehicle's rear axle. Now that we know how a weight distribution hitch fundamentally works, you're probably wondering which hitch is which, or which hitch will work best for your specific towing configuration. Assuming your towing setup needs weight distribution, you'll want to pick one out that supports the gross weight of the trailer and is rated for the tongue weight of your trailer. A weight distribution hitch might be rated for a trailer whose gross weight is equal to five to 8,000 pounds. Maybe it's rated for eight to 10 or even 10 to 15,000 pounds. It's important that we use the right size hitch for our trailer. The amount of lifting force torquing the trailer's draw bars upward is equal to the maximum applied force from the spring arms and the hitch load. Spring arm force is variable in two ways. First, it can be stepped up or down by shortening or lengthening the number of chain links between the snap-up brackets and the spring arms. And second, it's mechanically impacted by the distance between the coupler and the forward-most axle on the trailer's suspension. Hitch load includes any weight sitting on the rear axle of the tow vehicle, including the trailer's tongue weight and the axle itself. This means that a large heavy-duty axle distributing weight onto a smaller lightweight trailer, which is well within the truck's towing capacity, might fold or wrinkle the trailer's drawbars with the thousands of pounds of lift generated by the weight distribution hitch. Once the hitch load and the spring arm force is combined under these conditions, the risk of damage to the trailer is much greater, especially when traversing off-road or cross-country conditions. The risk is increased even further when driving with it engaged over rough roads, through profound ditches, over dips or swells, or while launching a boat. There is a misconception that a weight distribution hitch provides sway control. While some weight distribution hitch kits include a sway control feature, sway control is neither a benefit or consequence of weight distribution. Weight distribution hitches with a sway control function will need to have the spring arms disengaged when driving under the listed conditions. Also, try not to have the weight distribution hitch engaged when towing the trailer over a steep transition and grade, like those found between a level street and a steep uphill driveway. Before you couple your trailer to your towing vehicle, take a few baseline measurements. First, we'll record the distance from the center bottommost edge of the front bumper to the ground, and the center bottommost edge of the rear bumper to the ground. With those measurements in hand, we can now couple our trailer using a conventional tow hitch to the towing vehicle and retake those measurements. If the front end hasn't moved at all, then you won't need a weight distribution hitch. The same holds up if the rear suspension has only moved about a half inch from its original position. If we do need to install a hitch, those measurements will be useful later. Once a weight distribution hitch is installed and the trailer is coupled to its ball mount, we can retake the measurements from the bumper to the ground to determine if we are within a one half inch margin of error for the ride height. If the difference between the two measurements exceeds one half inch, the weight distribution hitch will need to be adjusted by shortening or lengthening the lift chain adjusting the head unit's angle or its position on the tow shank until the ride height falls within the one half inch margin of error.